sponsored by CuriosityStream. Get access to my streaming video service, Nebula, when you sign up for CuriosityStream using the link in the description. It's here. No, I'm not messing with you. It's not a dream. You didn't wake up in an alternate reality. I need you to focus. It's really here. Biggity big, clackity clack, zoomity zoom. Here, really, I swear. And I'm gonna jump on a plane, get it, and go hands on with it for you right freaking now. Oh yeah, I'm Renee Ritchie and this is Vector. Okay. I'm super excited because I love new technology. And also this new 16 inch MacBook Pro just checks so many items off my wish list. But caveat up front, despite how excited I am right now, all of this stuff still has to be tested and some of it will need long term testing. So I'll share what I find in a week out and a month or three out as well. But for now, new technology, all the fun details and five big things you need to know. Apple has made higher density retina displays, wider gamut P3 displays, and dynamic cast true tone displays for a few years now, but they haven't made a physically bigger display, not since they sank the old 17 inch battleship, not until today. Now, the new MacBook Pro comes with a 16 inch screen crammed into a 15 inch chassis. Well, almost. It's a millimeter thicker at 0.64 inches, and yes, I totally just did switch scales there, thanks America, and about a third of a pound heavier, or 4.3 pounds compared to last year's 15 inch MacBook Pro. It's also 500 nits of P3 color at 3072 by 1920 pixels and 226 PPI. And you can adjust the refresh rate in system preferences to match any video you may be editing, which, yeah, Hurrah! It's exactly the same play Apple made with the iPhone X and the latest iPad Pro because people want bigger screens. They just don't want bigger devices. Add up to two, two Pro Display XDR or a sidecar on an iPad and you've got everything from a mobile rig to a mobile workstation. Yeah, forget the screen, right? What everyone wants to know is the keyboard. After three years and three generations of butterfly keyboards with issues from no taps to double taps and a feeling that some portion of the MacBook customer base just hated it regardless, Apple has gone back to the typing board and come up with something old as new again. A lot of people aren't going to fully believe it until they use it or go a year or several without any issues. But mechanically, functionally, typing on it right now, I'm tactily optimistic that Apple has finally put the butterfly behind them. Apple says they started with the IMAX Magic Keyboard, something that almost everyone using it adores if not considers Apple's outright best keyboard ever. Then they re-architected it to provide the same experience while lying absolutely flat and embedded on a laptop. That includes a return to the scissor switch mechanism we all know and love, which gives another millimeter of travel. A new rubber dome that kicks back harder and can lock into the new keycap at the top of travel to keep the stability that most people, including myself, legitimately preferred with the butterfly keyboards. The keys are ever so slightly smaller, like 0.5 millimeter smaller, but I can't see or feel the difference. Also, hold on to your code developers, the dedicated escape key is back and it's mirrored on the other side with a dedicated Touch ID power button, like on the MacBook Air. The touch bar now sits between them, though unfortunately still not tactically force touch so. Better still, the arrow keys are now back in the blessed inverted T formation, so you can actually feel which key you're hitting instead of just hopes and prayersing it like an animal. It took me all of a minute though to adjust to the new ones, but it'll take me a little longer to figure out if I really prefer it or not. Likewise, it's going to take months, if not a year, before every drop of confidence is restored. But it feels like Apple has made a huge stride in exactly that direction. All the typing fingers crossed. Three years ago, Apple deleted USB-A from the MacBook Pro and HDMI and the SDHC card, and nothing has changed here. The ports on the new 16 inch are the same as the previous 15 inch, four USB-C, Thunderbolt 3, and a headphone jack. The camera is still 720p, which is honestly a disservice to the rest of this machine. I get that the lid is super thin, but I would really, really give a big old camera bump to get 4K, even 1080p at this point, and Face ID. The technology for that part isn't small enough yet, but since Apple made so many of my other wishes come true, that's now moving pretty much to the top of my list. 
Same with Wi-Fi, which didn't get the Wi-Fi 6 bump of the iPhone 11 and is still 802.11ac, even as Bluetooth moved to 5.0. The 16-inch MacBook Pro starts off with a 2.6 GHz 6-core i7 turbo boosted up to 4.5 GHz Intel Core processor. But if you want more cores, you can go all the way to a 2.4 GHz 8-core i9 turbo boosted up to 5 GHz. That's 9th generation Coffee Lake refresh for anyone still keeping track of that stuff at home. Graphics start with AMD's new 7 nanometer Radeon Pro 5300M with 4 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory and go all the way up to Radeon Pro 5500M. They've got 1.5 times more performance per watt and a wider architecture with more compute units and stream processors. Apple says that tops out at 80% faster performance than the previous Radeon Vega Pro 20. And yeah, Apple still has their own custom silicon inside as well. Same T2 chip as before, and as well as handling authentication for Touch ID and Apple Pay and all of that, it's also still doing things like accelerating HEVC, which is H.265, encoding beyond what standard laptop processors can do. To support all this, there's a new thermal architecture with larger impellers, more blades, and new fans that improve airflow by what Apple says is 28%. There's also a redesigned heatsink that has 35% more surface area and a greater efficiency to dissipate heat more effectively. And all of that combines to sustain up to 12 additional watts of power during intense workloads. Storage starts at 512 gigabytes, which is better than the 256 gigabytes of the last generation, but still super lean in the modern era. But now you can take it all the way up to eight terabytes. I'll say it again, eight terabytes of 3.2 gigabit per second storage. As someone who posts a new 4K video almost every day and has been experimenting with 4K RAW, never mind people who shoot and work in 8K HDR, that's literally a dream. A super expensive dream, yeah, but for anyone billing out purchases to clients, a literal now available dream. So is the memory. It starts at 16 gigabytes of 2066 megahertz DDR4, but you can take it all the way up to 64 gigabytes if you have the budget, which again will be a dream for anyone doing pro video audio, graphics, development, anything that pays for itself in productivity speed. Powering all this is a new, bigger, 100 watt battery, the largest allowed on a plane by the FAA. It'll last an hour longer according to Apple's reference, 11 instead of 10, and still 30 days of standby. And with a new 96 watt charging brick, you can go from zero to full in about two and a half hours. Now, I didn't think I'd have a section on this, but that fancy audio lab Apple built outside of Park for the AirPods and HomePods is just showing up in pretty much every device now. It's just paying off so well, including the new 16-inch MacBook Pro. For speakers, there's a new Hi-Fi six-speaker surround system that sounds like a HomePod was flattened out and shoved into either side of the keyboard. It's got force-canceling woofers and back-to-back -back drivers, so if the MacBook is rocking, you don't have to worry about any knocking. And it's bananas. It supports Dolby Atmos and is seriously room-filling. The mics are even more interesting. They're in a three mic array that Apple is calling studio quality. Their goal was to make the MacBook Pro have such a high signal to noise ratio that it would rival recording with a standalone USB mic, like the Blue Yeti. And well, I recorded all of this with the MacBook Pro's mics, so you tell me what you think. Now, the biggest surprise for me about the new 16-inch MacBook Pro is that Apple isn't introducing it on top of the existing 15-inch MacBook Pro. No, they're replacing the 15-inch MacBook Pro with the 16-inch and at the same price, starting at $23.99. It's totally in keeping with Apple's mantra of making the mobile devices so good that they push hard up against the desktops and force those desktops to fight back. But we'll get to the new Mac Pro and its new 8 terabyte option come December. For now, this is the MacBook Pro's time. Again, this is me at max excite, fresh first tech love mode. But in addition to recording the audio and editing audio and video for this whole thing on the new MacBook Pro, I'm gonna be pushing it hard for weeks and months to come and giving you a much more sober set of reviews as soon as inhumanly possible. Okay, one more quick thing. A bunch of you have asked how you can watch these videos just not on YouTube. I get it, believe me, it's exactly the reason I helped build Nebula. It's a streaming video platform built by and for independent creators like CGP Grey, Kirkazak, Lindsay Ellis, Polymatter, Thomas Frank, 
half as interesting, Tech Altar, and yours truly. We're building it because we want a place for education -y creators to try out new content ideas that just might not work on YouTube, or for people who simply don't want to watch them on YouTube, including cool new original series like Working Titles and Grand Test Auto. And because it now comes bundled with CuriosityStream, you also get access to thousands of documentaries and series, like The Real War of Thrones, Season 2, the true story of Europe's religious wars and the power games that the families that ruled the continent played to crush their enemies. By signing up, you won't just be helping me out, but the entire educational community as we work together to build a place where you can create content you really want us to create. Just go to curiositystream.com slash vector for unlimited access to the world's top documentaries and nonfiction series, and now Nebula as well, and enter the promo code VECTOR to start your membership completely free for the first 31 days. Thanks CuriosityStream, and thanks to all of you for supporting the show. So boom, whoosh, I'm back, but lots more to come. So hit like if you do, hit subscribe if you haven't already, share if you care, and scissor switch that bell gizmo so you don't miss the next show. Then hit up the comments and let me know just every question you have and what you want to see in my upcoming review. Thanks for watching. See you next video.